there being a quorum of the public safety committee, I call it to order. Hello, everybody. Happy. Happy day after. Yeah. Really. These are Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, the motto. Uh, any member of the public like to have a comment? Moving on, chair report. I don't really have one. Uh, uh, so it's out of the Sorry. Oh yeah, we'll go back to the minutes. Give me a about a couple, just a couple more minutes. I'm almost. Page two, just a, a missing word under Tree Warden's report. If you want to add the word moving after a process of. And then under significant tree ordinance, close the quotes on net zero. And after building code and add the word build. Uh, same same uh, sentence. In the build, okay, in the building code and oh. will not be. Yeah, Is this right? Ridge will try to organize the data letter on a team drive. Excuse me. At the top of page four. Horses? Yeah. Or, or is it supposed to be on a card like a flash? No, team drive. Uh, what Google, is it? Google, oh. Google team drive? Oh, what is it? It's a kind of, it's a shared drive that we've built oh. that we are, where all our documents will be deposited oh, okay. and you will all be invited to access everything. Oh, I didn't know what that was. Yeah. Okay. What's something? I don't know how to use it yet, but I know it's there. Okay. <laughs> Is there a motion? I have to swallow that. I make a motion to approve last meeting, all last meeting's minutes. Second. Motion we're set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Oh, I was thinking. Boom. Done. Uh, so, no chair report for me. Let's jump down to our tree board report. Um, so, I have, I don't know if you, if you remember back in August, we had a request for a public shade tree hearing um, at 38 Sider Street, which is down the street from where Sula is. Oh, yeah. um, since, and there was uh, at the public shade tree hearing, the applicant and I came to agreement where the tree would actually stay and it actually wasn't going to impact the area potential new driveway, so now it's going to impact the new driveway. Mm -hmm. And that's due to unseen uh, site conditions because the water table is so high mm -hmm. that they actually had to lift um, the foundation higher out of the ground and move the house uh, to the left. Oh, so now wow. the tree is in the way of the driveway um, and they really can't get into the street properly um, with the way that it's configured. So mm -hmm. I'm going to schedule another public shade tree hearing probably on my calendar, but I think it's going to be like the third week in November, if I did my math right. Probably on the 19th, if I can get the Gazette to run the ads, where um, the applicant has already agreed to have someone actually come and dig the tree up and move it to the left about 10 feet. Oh. So it'll stay on site, it's just got to get moved, oh. but I, by law, I have to have a public shade tree. Is it one of the ones we just planted? No, it's a three inch, uh, no, it's a uh, tree lilac. Yeah. It's in fair condition. And I also put a condition in there that if the tree dies within the next two years, after, two years after the move, the applicant has to replace it, either in kind or with the $90 for Cal Branch. So he agreed to it. I just have to put those good stuff on the paper. Do you know who's moving it? Just Who's going to move it? Yeah. No, I told him that I need to, I had us to be a certified arborist. So I'll, I said, well, whatever your company is, I need to have their credentials. I was just curious. Yeah. No, I don't know. He, he's a very, he's a really nice developed contractor, and I really like working with him. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to 
Sure. And he's been very good about it. He said, I, I want to keep the tree because the tree is going to help you know, make the house look nice so I can sell it and so on and so forth. And the whole project's been a nightmare for him, I guess. But, um, I don't really have uh, any, I mean, there's things to talk about in here, which I can't see, of course. I got the grant tree speak. Yeah, so we pretty much get everything that I have to report on. That's the only. So what, what did you think about the bare roof planting? That's not on here, but I just was curious if you were planting. I, I actually. So, first of all, I thought the tree stock was fantastic. Yeah. Um, they said what they said they were going to do, they did. Mm -hmm. They were delivered, they were in time. The bags weren't broken open. There was plenty of hy uh, hydrogel all over the roots. Uh, for the most part, even the canopies were actually still leafed out and pretty, pretty healthy. I would say, you know, I mean, some broken branches, but that's normal in transport. Um, as far as the whole day went, I thought the day was fantastic. I mean, I think we really went to the well that day. Though. We really used up all the volunteers we could, plus a couple of reserves. So, um, but I think. You know, we proved that we could plant 32 trees, which we did that day. Because then Rob and I and John Altoff, uh, actually John, yeah, were you there? Uh, yeah, we planted four. We planted four more, plus we had another extra elm we had to go back the following day, which was in laying on the ground with the other ones. And Rob and I were having a little bit of a uh, brain brain. You guys are like that annoying guy at the gym that just rips out four more. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Although I couldn't, I couldn't even pull one off. So I mean, you know. Oh, we were done. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, I think, I think overall, I think it went really well, and I, and I really, it gives me renewed hope that we can actually plant more bare root trees uh, with the amount of volunteers that we had, and all the volunteers were were super. And then your group was fantastic. Your, your group was. They still talking about it. They were all. I mean, they, really just, oh, they were just a little upset you didn't get them breakfast. But yeah, yeah. They were <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We stopped too early. I was gonna buy them lunch, and I see stuff. I'm like, uh, I'm but I mean, we can we can more. talk a little more about that in the fall planting if anybody mm -hmm. has any questions. Okay. And right. is, is that part of your? Oh yeah. Work? That's yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. So this was this is not on the agenda, but I can stick it under mine. So this was a little oh. emailed. Uh, this was the oh, brainstorm. I think it was yeah, yeah. Molly, Lily, and Marilyn, and Marilyn right? Yeah, Marilyn. So we, you guys brainstormed, right. and I, I'm sorry, Marilyn. I, didn't, That's right. I thought there was one over there. I apologize. And uh, this is what we came up with. I had Marcus uh, printing make these. These are on polyester. Although I don't really care for the fact that they're on chemical things, but there's not much I can do about it because we want them to last. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can just use. Uh, little zip ties or we can use baling twine mm -hmm. just to tie them to the trees after we plant them so folks can see them. Who designed uh, it? They did. They did. They did. I, I just gave them the, the lingo and I just... I think it's really nice. So yeah, I just put a tree in there and put the city logo up there and... Nice. Um, and it's so, small enough so it's not like a giant clunky laminated sign that's hanging off a tree that makes it look right. like, you know, right. like this tree is for sale. Or that, nice or this colors. Look, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is there a plan to put these up on all the trees that we planted? Or just from I now think, on? I think from now on, going forward, we're going to do, we'll, we'll do this. I mean, you know, so we've done, we'll be doing this kind of advertising. We've done the free trees to good homes, which I've actually captured a few more people since we planted over here on, on Bridge, uh, Bridge Street last week. So. That could be a project for volunteers. Um, yeah. We put these up. Yeah, we have a pretty good um, system for knowing where all the Right. Trees you are. Could. right, street by street. You could, I could get you a bunch of zip ties. Yeah. Belly is okay, but it will rot eventually. Mm -hmm. And it'll take longer. Yeah. yeah. Would you want them on every tree, or like let's say on South Street, I don't think we need one on every single yeah, tree. Yeah, maybe not You know what I mean? Yeah. Like every so many trees when you have to walk. I mean, that's yeah. just my personal. I mean, these would really be effective in places where there's just one or two trees yeah. planted, you yeah. know, or four yeah. trees planted. Like a place like that, you could do every block, you could put them on, mm -hmm. you know, at the end. Mm -hmm. People actually stop to look across and they look mm -hmm. and say, oh, look at that tag over there. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. I was concerned about them hurting the tree in any way as the trees grow. Well, eventually, I'll, put them on too tight. eventually they'll have to come off, so I would just leave them yeah. loose. But they'll have to come off eventually, they can't stand up forever. So you want to put them on a place that's not critical. 
yeah, when we're out in the branch, yeah. and not on a branch not that, that will be taking off. So if you put yeah, on a lower, lower lower branch, yeah. that way it strangles it, we won't. Because if you don't get, the trees grow quickly if you don't get back in time. Yeah. Yep. We can leave a zip tie at a preview. Yeah. So. We can, and then, you know, our hope is, is that we are going to go back and cut them off. Cut them off when we go to actually do their first young tree train. Right. Yeah. Would be basically the time to do that. So I like the design. I don't want to ruin the design or change anything. Thanks, because we had ordered five million. You said we're finding five million trees before you retire. Yeah, you're right. I wonder if we had a little sticker that said, this is for stickers, and those that felt like it, maybe put the species on it. Oh, yeah. You could. It doesn't have to be permanent. It could be just. Uh, it could, or the other thing you could do is you could actually take the tags that come with the tree, and you could actually loop them, loop them right through the zip tie. Oh, no, like that's that. true. Because oh, they are, yeah. they are that plastic yeah, they sure stuff. Are. Yeah. yeah. And you can just that way there. It's not. Yeah. Most of them are really tied around the branching of the or the trunk, mm -hmm. and just use that. I like that. There's and that way there, we're not creating any more waste strands. Yeah. 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 Yes. I like that. Okay. And if you go to Missouri Botanical Garden, they put a pronunciation of that. The bird, you know, they have it recorded. Some people in this room listen to it. Missouri? <laughs> Missouri Botanical Garden. Plant finder. Yeah. I go there all the time. Yeah. Audio? Audio. Yeah. Oh. It kind of tells you how to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just like, I want to do that. So you can go, oh, it's in a button to press on the tree. No. <laughs> right. We're getting there. That's like, tree speak 2.0. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can kind of throwing those tags away. And mm -hmm. It would be great if we yeah. did that for the line. Because it's a um, huge number of species and uh, cold parts that we're playing. Yeah. Another thing to add to the buckets. Are you talking about species in what role? Cold So, you know. We plant sweet gums, but we've already planted five cultivars in sweet gum. We plant elms, we've planted five, three or four of these elms. You know, it goes on and on. Rich, any follow up on the WGBY interview? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, I'll afford you the first, um, the first part of that two part series. The other part's going to be aired tonight. Which will have the volunteer tree planters, mm -hmm. probably a little clip of some stuff I've said, and I think the community of length. But Molly Freilicher is on there, uh, so I'll pour that to all you while we're sitting here. Great. Um, but yeah, the gentleman, he, he came out uh, twice. He came out two Saturdays ago and did uh, downtown Florence. Downtown Florence. Oh, he did downtown Florence. He actually came out three times. He did, no, twice. Downtown Florence for that one day on the Wednesday. And he came back the following Saturday when we were planting on North Naples. And then also on, uh, he came out to uh, West Hampton Road and did a couple setback trees. So he got to see the full, you know, this is a public shade tree in this area. And this is, uh, and it, what he did so far, I can say, is pretty well done. Of course, well, I don't, it's not my forte, so it could be really bad and it would look good to me anyways. But. It should be on their website. Yeah. yeah. I'll forward you the link from Molly Frelisher. Mm -hmm. What channel is it on tonight? 57. 57. Is that local public? Local public television. Yeah. The first one had a lot about um, UMass. UMass, it yeah. did. It had Stockbridge School. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. That's it for now. Why don't you keep going with the grants? So I want to say thank you to Molly for sending those locations. But I had to do them myself because the grant was due oh. last week. That's okay. You already I, done it, yeah. But I just wanted to say thank you. I know you put a lot of effort into it. Oh, I didn't. It. it was very quick. Yep. Well, uh, you should have seen me trying to draw. Oh, darn! I should have done Sorry, it I'm just before. kidding. Uh, so the grant, um, I sent it electronically, and I also mailed it. So the grant has been submitted. Um, wow. Thank you, everybody. The total, the total grant package, including the $30,000 fully funded from DCR, is like 50, almost 58000 So that includes 60 plantings. Seven of them will be in CU soil in that parking lot using CU soil and some sort of porous pavement, which I failed to bring. 
for Jen, and I looked at it today. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we'll get it. But I'll get it to you. I can, I can throw it out of my truck on your porch. Oh, sure. That'll work. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the plantings are basically in the areas that I were identified by Rob. Who else went out? Alicia. Alicia. In Maryland. In Maryland. So, and, I, and what I did is I had to, I kind of I fudged it just a little bit, kind of squeezed some together because I wanted to get the full 60 all together. You know? So we have a couple of street tree plantings up on the corner of both South and Maine. Um, and I added, you know, the eight trees over here. So I did a, mm -hmm. so I, I think we're, I think we're good. And Lily got all the other paperwork in order. We got all the letters together of a uh, you know, letter of recommendation for myself. And I think there were four other letters that were in there. And the chamber, the, the downtown chamber. North Hampton yeah. Association, the wow. Academy of Music. I sent one. You sent one. From the yeah. climate action group yep. of the insurance system. Yep. Thank you. And Trainer Hampton. And Trainer Hampton. Wow, so, that's a lot of teamwork. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I, I was a little disappointed, to be true with you, at the, at the, the extensive cost for the like the structure. So I like the CSO mm -hmm. is going to cost 20 grand. Oh, God. Just for seven trees? Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Right. So you have to weigh that against the other, mm -hmm. what we spend otherwise on trees, in other words, we want to really make sure that we don't drain our resources um, and that prevents us from planting, because that can, yep. it's equivalent to 40. Uh, yeah, that's it, right. So yeah. that's, mm -hmm. no, no, more than that. Yeah. And we'll find out by when, Rich? They usually announce the award, you saw at the Mastery Awards and Foresters Conference, which is in January is when we had our last time we applied for the grant for the inventory. That's when I was approached by DCR and told that we were awarded the fully funded 30 grand. I got a letter I think before that, but it was right around that time, so the third week of January. Oh. Do, do you still have an uh, appointment with the person from Cornell, the CSO so person? No, I do not at the moment, but I did write along an, an email to uh, Nina Bassett. And I asked her actually if she'd be willing to come out here and actually be part of the um, one of the days of installation of the CU soil mm -hmm. to actually partner with us or partner with the Tree Warden and Forest Association to actually kind of give us a little uh, mini workshop. I haven't heard back from her, so I imagine I don't know if she's like on vacation or she's teaching somewhere possibly. Um, but I put that out there, and we're not really we're not going to be doing that until next late next spring, early summer. That's kind of the timing that I, you know, I put the timing, so I, you, the timing of the grant, really they like to see the timing of the grant done within one, one calendar year time, but that doesn't, we still are allowed to actually ask for extensions. So we can ask for an extension. So if we end up, if it gets too hot, and we don't want to do the work, we can do an extension in the fall. You know, so that, that way the grant would actually be due um, 30th of December and have to have all the grant information in and then we can get another extension if we did that with the, our uh, inventory RFP. So so I, I tried to get her, I'd like to have her come out because I'm not, you know, I can watch the videos and everything else, but I'm not really truly experienced with this stuff. And I think I'm kind of glad that we only picked to do seven trees instead of doing the whole parking lot because I think it will put in perspective for us how how much effort mm -hmm. and how much work it is to actually convert something mm -hmm. that exists to CU soil. Right, and get it into the plan yep. before stuff gets built. Per correct. Yeah. We had identified almost 20 sites, so are the other sites, will they be planted? No. No, so just seven sites, not yep. a lot. Okay. Yep. So not only if you were building a lot, would you, it'd be easier to get it in, but you would then have put it underneath the parking area, and so you would be getting probably about four times four the soil mass. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, what I did is I just took the soil volume between the granite curbs. So basically we're taking the concrete hardscape out, we're taking this soil material out to about uh, 40 inches, and then we're putting back 36 inches of CO soil and then flexi paved. Mm -hmm. uh, and the actual gentleman who's going to, it's actually force paved is the name of it. Product. They're going to come out actually and work with us for uh, half a day to show us how to do it and give us a training. And their material, I think, including his training time, is about 9,000. 
So just so just for those just for those seven trees, that's taking up mainly almost all of DCR's thirty thousand dollars. Wait, the nine thousand is in addition to the twenty thousand? Yeah. Wow. So the retrofit yes. is what the The retrofit's the expect right. It's the it's the high cost. I mean and then now we're gonna be planting, you know, uh, fifty some odd other trees in traditional well planting. And the lesson for the for the city and for Mascot is that fight for this up front and don't right. have this be the first thing that's cut when the budget is getting tight for right. a new roadway project. Right. Lots of street. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Although we did actually we planted a tree the other day at, at uh, 251 no. on, on Pleasant Street on last Saturday, Rob and myself yeah, and yeah, the volunteers, yeah. and we actually ran into Starkville soil. Yeah. And it was a real pain. Oh. It did. It's hard to so there are some trees that are planted with CU soil. That particular tree that was there actually uh, broke in half. There's somebody leaned up against it. Oh. <laughs> so there is CU soil. We put the tree back in there and basically bare rooted it. We put it back in there and oh. we'll see how it goes. But that's a retrofit, you know, because that's just really between the curb and the the property line, so there's like two sidewalk panels. It's probably six feet by. But did they put six it under the sidewalk? Panel? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the problem. That's really the ideal right. use because it allows mm -hmm. a pathway for the mm -hmm. roots to hit the hit the lawn. Hit the lawn. Mm -hmm. So that tree might be a very yeah. successful tree. And the other thing too that I liked about just doing a certain number of trees is that I picked the one of the islands out there that actually has two mature uh, the red maples. So they'll be. Young trees there with CU soil and trees there that are mature that are from 1989, 1990 that have no CU soil and it would be interesting to do a little bit of a case study to oh, see yeah, sure. how fast those younger trees grow versus the other trees because those trees are actually kind of short, very large trunks, mm -hmm. very large flares that are keeping up the, the pavement, mm -hmm. I mean the hardscape, so it would be kind of interesting like a little case study although we have 20 years on one but that's why I wanted Dr. Bassett to come out because I think it would be and she says right on her web page that she's willing to consult with municipalities and everything else so mm -hmm. for some fee I would imagine I'm not sure it's not yeah. free but yeah so Rich that that tree that you had to replace you're saying that um at the same time that structural soil uh, the CU soil protects against compaction things it mm -hmm. also is difficult if you have to replace yeah, it was, it was like digging in gravel. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The shovel doesn't go in. You, you oh. have to scrape that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But luckily we had okay? a hefty mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I would assume it would because it's just like a typical planting. You would just have the B and B or the grow bag, and you actually place that right within the CU soil chamber that you make. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen I've, some applications I've seen them where they actually just put the CU soil and leave the tree pit sort of like vacant, you know, and then they actually put some soil in there with the B&B, &B, and then the tree just goes out into the soil that's in that little four by four box, and then it goes under the into the CU soil. That's kind of like a retrofit, so we'll see what happens. It, another interesting thing about that site was that there was a it's like a complete wire basket untouched. Oh, oh yeah, oh, it was perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? They never took it off? Yeah. And actually... Oh, oh yeah. it was also buried. So in other words, when you put it in, that, that, that the basket itself was way down there. So obviously the flare was like even oh. further down. Wow. <laughs> so somewhere in here, I'll send you a picture. I'll find it eventually. But there, we did that tree planting in Florence Center. And we had to dig out a stump that was one of those tree wells, and that stump was outside my office. We washed it off completely, and it's totally entangled with a wire basket. And that tree is probably 20, 20 to 25 years old. It did bad things to the yeah. shape of the tree. Oh man, I need yep. to get that picture. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll on my campus right yep. now. Can I just throw in that the Saturday they were trying to dig the gravel, it was in the 40s and raining. Oh, nice. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a good time. Good enough yeah, time. I'm sorry. I wasn't there. But you guys did it. It wasn't raining. Um, I don't know if this is the right time to bring it up, but on the subject of trees and their condition when they're being planted, is there anything we can do about these trees we've gotten that have horrible little tiny, root, you know, circular roots like this where you have to cut off almost everything and there's hardly anything left? Is there any reason, any way to? Um, 
like check for that ahead of time or, or track it? I don't know. It's kind of so. It's a bad product. So no, I, 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 I can speak to it, but I think uh, the, you're always going to get some that are not good, but the trick to avoiding many poor root structures in fossil is to buy the trees that somehow you know are going to have a good root structure. And that's, I think, something I've just been here beating the drum over and over is that instead of picking the spots and then going in the trees to put the right species and then putting them in, you go by the good trees and then you have to find where you put them because it's just the only way. But you wouldn't know until you started. They're in a bag. So, so, so I'll give you an yeah. example. So I think the trees you're talking about were some oak trees. Um, yes, the yes. white oaks. Yeah. So, so now I know that the white oak trees, oh, John had a bunch, I've seen them more than just the ones you planted. Mm -hmm. That the root structure is not very good on them. On the other hand, today I planted some bald cypress that have a very nice root structure. You've got 20 or 30 bald cypress. I would just go back there and buy the 20 or 30 bald cypress not or, and then find where they go. Because having trees with poor root structure is just depressing. I know. And the only way to avoid it is to, for me to have like x-ray vision into John's tree pile yeah. and buy the ones that have good reason. Good reason. And that's the way I have been trying to, to buy. But as we get more and more to like, let's plant this and then this is the, this is the tree we have to specify and then we go out and get that tree. Mm -hmm. I'm just driving the people who go and buy the trees and plant the trees into a corner doing that. And uh, because, you know, and then the, the other alternative is Rich gets on the phone and calls up northern Connecticut, a big tree supplier, big expensive trees, and the roots, you know, they're hard to plant, they're being, being and the roots are often not very nice. So, so yeah. were the bad root structures in, were they ball burlap or they were, yes. they were bags? They were in a bag. Oh, really? So you couldn't see it. I mean, from the top you wouldn't know. Because a lot of times ball. those are, it wasn't ball burlap. It no, no, it was John's product. Huh? Yeah, wow. and, 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 Interesting. and what happened with those, I believe, is that John probably bought them. Uh, they didn't grow in poorly into that bag. Mm -hmm. When they were put in that bag, they yeah. already had poor structure. Right, I got So you. he right. bought from somewhere else yeah. on poor structure. Mm -hmm. So there's two opportunities or multiple opportunities <coughs> for the shape to be ruined. Mm -hmm. It can happen when when John gets them they're already terrible mm -hmm. or then John can somehow put them in the bag and things mm -hmm. don't go bad. Mm -hmm. So when I find when I find like those ball cypress with just great fibrous roots, you put it in it stands up because it's got, you know, you know the, what it feels like when you have a right tree. Mm -hmm. Then I want to buy all those <laughs> and then find places where ball cypress. I mean, ball cypress, within, you only buy trees that are great trees. Mm -hmm. Ball cypress is a great tree for our diversity. Mm -hmm. But then, if, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the answer. And those oaks were specified. In other words, it wasn't that we oh, went. Those said, people wanted white oaks. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with that. When they said that, it was like, okay, we'll go find some white oaks. And we didn't know what they looked like inside the bag. So, in other words, and it's very hard to tell, so buying a couple. So now, from now on, you would avoid buying white oaks in a bag? From that from crop. From that nursery? From that crop. That oh, that crop? Yeah. Oh. Nothing wrong with Because normally, oaks. we've had pretty good luck with the, with the bags. Yeah. Like, as far as quality of food falls yeah. go. Right far superior like the worst is usually is in in, in containers yeah. yeah and then ball and burlap yeah. sometimes you get good ones sometimes you don't it and just then seemed like the, the bag was restraining the um roots almost as much as a plastic can would be it might be yeah yeah, yeah. i mean those were, were good i i planted ones more didn't I? and we avoided it so I'm talking to people like um, Christina Bazanson, who was really mentioned, she's mm -hmm. an arborist, she's in the town working at lecturing at UMass. It's industry wide. Oh, yeah. So it's not. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so Rich, like we can just say, oh, we're not buying trees from you. Right. <laughs> right. Um, right. And Rich confirmed that, that okay. when we get these B&B trees that don't look good, 
rich two firms that actually affects the industry. Oh. So when we get these trees from Northern in particular, they're probably pretty good, but industry standard, but they're awful from mm. our, our standard often. Huh. Or not, <laughs> pretty easy. They got a lot of strangling roots. Yeah, they got a lot of The other thing too is that what I've got to pull us back on the agenda. Yeah, so okay. You want to go back? Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. no I, I just, I think, well, you know, what, what I've discovered is that it's okay to take apart, I mean, when I was taught to plant trees many years ago, you know, they, they said never, you know, don't touch the soil on a B&B and throw it in the ground, that's right. the end of it. Well, I'm, well, now that we've fast forward 20 something years, 30 years, mm -hmm. it's okay to actually almost basically take mm -hmm. take that tree and bare root it. Yeah. You know? And that's how you find these discrepancies. Yeah. They made, the canopies okay. may look beautiful, mm -hmm. but underneath the soil there's all this stuff that's lurking that could be detrimental to the tree over the long term. Mm -hmm. So on some of these trees like the oak they're not fixable because they're just twisted. Yeah. Them. But right. some are fixable and the yeah. way you find out is you take things apart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways now we can see back in the genetic right. Okay. Let's go. Crack the widow. Just please I just really wanted to emphasize what I had to say. Thanks, Mr. Press. Yeah, no I think uh, I want to I'll, I'll, we're gonna pick pick up the okay. theme a little bit later. Good. Uh, all right, I don't know who's in charge of this update, maybe nobody, but the Neighborhood Planting Project Promotion, yeah. who's our marketing director? That marketing director is the chairperson, she's not here, so sure. my message, um, so Lily, so Lily actually, when we put up the, uh, when the mayor put up the press release, part of that press release was to go to the Daily Hampshire Gazette. And part of it, they were hoping that it, the Gazette would grab on to the neighborhood tree planting program and actually put it somewhere. They haven't done that. So Lily and I were brainstorming on the phone this afternoon about how, because um, we both feel, and I'm sure most of you do, that it would be nice to have some competition for this grant process and not just have one neighborhood, you know, apply. Um, so she is going to send me a revised draft of that part of the language and I'm going to send it to a contact person at the Daily Hampshire Gazette and at least get it into Hampshire Life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if they'll do an article. Um, she also was going to reach out to Shoshana to see if she would write uh, herself a letter to the editor from the um, neighborhood perspective mm -hmm. um, to kind of drum up a little, because a lot of people read, you know, the letters to the editor or the opinions these days, so I think it would be a good place to go to if uh, you want to say something. So you're in charge of it. Yeah, I just had an idea. Yeah. Uh, how about charging the uh, city council, the district city councilors to uh, spread the news and get their huh? wards excited to participate? Actually, that's a really that's good That is interesting. There you go. Uh, one of the least uh, amount of participants in the book. Even interest. Just the neighborhood list serve. Yeah, I mean they're obviously engaged in their neighborhoods, or they should be more than. Well, you know, one of the things that yeah. I, one of the things that came to mind is one of the places that we very rarely ever plant trees, and we have it, and it's kind of on treaded water, is that section of the city that's like between Ward Seven and Ward Six. Ryan Road, Berks mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. Even though that's heavily forested or heavily treed roadways, there's pockets of development from the late 40s, 50s, and 60s that don't have, you know, they have very little street trees there. The little neighborhoods. Yes. Like Ryan Road, yeah. Yeah. Ryan yeah. Road yeah. yep, that right. whole area. Um, right. That's Ward 6. Ward 6. Yeah. So that, I would like to, you know, reach out to Council of the Barge and I'll mm -hmm. do that and hopefully she can. But we've had resistance every time we put the plant trees there. Uh, right. There's been quite a bit of resistance for whatever reason. So, but I think it would be a good place for us to actually try to address mm -hmm. at some point, either through this program or through our own planting uh, plan. But that's another conversation. But maybe we could distribute something for the Ryan Road School. Yeah, I don't know if there's a listserv out there. I can find that information out. But once Lily actually gives me a redraft of that document that she sent out, actually, I could probably. I could just take the mayor's press release and actually cut and paste it and just send out the neighborhood planting to the councilors and say, I just want to make you aware of this, blah, blah, blah. But I think that's actually yeah. really good. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, the other thing, too, is we could actually, I don't know, does one civic center have a 
or how about the DNA? Like the DNA, but they don't really reach out to homeowners, they reach out to businesses, right? For the most part. Yeah. Wait, were you saying um, get the word out through the counselors or through the ward chairs? Council, 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 council. Council. There's also, doesn't each ward have a chairperson or? No, I don't think so. That's the council. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, like, so they have, uh, like, Ward 3 Neighborhood Association is a really strong yeah, neighborhood asso yeah. association. Mm -hmm. They used to have a Ward 5 Neighborhood Association. I don't know yeah, if they're still in existence. I have one of the Ward 2. So that might be, that might be uh, something to actually. I don't think there's one in Ward 7 that I know of, except. Like Brook Street one. Yep. Okay. Todd didn't know if there was one. Um, but on the subject of the um, the neighborhood planting um, application online, the minutes as it was noted at the last meeting, there are some glitches on it, I guess. Um, what needs to happen with that? Do we know what the specific glitches are? Oh, I had Karen address them. There was just there were they were acting it was just acting a little funky. Oh. But Karen worked so through it and didn't seem to have any issue. Okay, so she it filed be an application on her own and worked through it and didn't seem to have any issues. Oh, great. So okay, so it's ready to go. Yep. Okay. Yep. So wait, how are we gonna? Um, is this the time to now start telling people about it? Other people that we know. Yes, because the, um, the deadline is the, the new deadline is December first. Okay. Because of the late rollout. All right, and it's on it's on the website. Ready to go. Okay. Yes. Yep. Spread the news. All right, moving on. Uh, Cause I already dealt with, but any additional updates on the fall plan thing? Oh, just puddle? Just not over. No okay. watering necessary. <laughs> no watering? No. no. We've got like we've got five plant, five trees on the agenda to plant if we can manage, and we're not going to do that for like two or three weeks from now. So we're kind of on fun. So how many are we? Yeah, what's yeah. the total? What are you up to? If somebody's been keeping a total, maybe is it? Is it? I have, but I, I didn't add your last ones on. Okay. Um, yeah. I brought it to the last meeting, but I don't have it with me right now. But anybody can look it up on that. On yeah. that it was like 280 to 290. Well, wow. Who had 508 for the first time? Google about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was 280 or 290. Wow. Uh, for, for this year? No. Yeah. Or just the, for yeah. the fall? No, for this year. Oh, okay. spring and fall. Mm -hmm. Wow. The spring and fall. That's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. what we mentioned on Sunday planting chestnuts? It includes those. It includes those. Okay, yeah. Wow. I, I'm reading that off the web. This is something that you, who's, is it you? Who put I thought you were on. Someone put the nine chestnut trees on. Oh, they did? They no. did? Oh. No. What did make? Well, wait, the nine chestnuts aren't going to be planted until I know, next but they're already on no, Saturday. 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 Oh. And they're already on that oh, list Saturday. before I got the 282. I thought it was Saturday. Oh. I don't know. Unless there were nine chestnuts from earlier, some other nine chestnuts. Maybe they could have been last year or something. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we'll we need to finish it up, though, so I won't do that. I'll send I you want to talk with you after the meeting. I'll just right. get some clarity yeah. over that. Yeah, some more yeah. history. So they're all claimed, the chestnuts? They're gonna all go to Spring Grove Cemetery. All? Oh, you need a couple? Come on. The uh, you want to brought one or something? You want to replace? We had to should replace the one that was removed. Eaten by a turtle. By the turtle, yeah. Really? A turtle? Oh yeah, or it ate uh, it, it, a snapping turtle went under the, the I mesh mean, net and. I didn't hear about this. Don't ate it like a like uh, a hole. No kidding. Yeah, I'm excited. About that. And then used the protective. Area for its nest. Did you get a wow. No kidding. Did you actually see the turtle? Yeah, they took a picture. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, a, a oh wow, there. that's fascinating. I didn't know turtles ate seeds. No one did. Not trees. <laughs> they might have just tried to get it out of the way. Right. Yeah, building its nest. That yeah. turtle just go around rugged. it. Oh, they're pretty it's rugged. A little stem or thing. ate the yeah the chestnut. <laughs> You're a vegetarian. It was in the way. It was in the way. Not Cannot be found. Anyway. Wow, that's interesting. Great story. That is a great story. So in since we formed three and a half years ago, have we hit the thousand mark yet for tree? No. No, no. we're about 900 for no, between eight and nine. Yeah. After I add in the last trees that Rob sent to me, I'll send you out all the um, final numbers. Mm -hmm. So this, this update here is from the last entry with Sheldon Field. That's 238. 
Oh yeah, I just added two, those. Um, two, uh, two hundred and thirty-seven trees. Oh, I see. So uh, I'm looking at a different sheet. Someone's keeping. You're looking at a suge I think the suggested sheet. There's suggested, and there's actually trees planted to the right. Mm -hmm. Suggested. My chart. I think my count. I'm looking at something where there is a count. Somebody's keeping a count, and it's about huh. two eighty-two. Well, that raises the question. So af after Molly and I worked to get in all of the data from yeah. our years of planting, um, so week to week, are are you going in there and just adding? No. No. No, I send them. He's sending it to me. Oh, okay, and then you put them in all the yeah, yep. And I put it in, yeah. All right, so I, I, and I owe Molly another batch. I think I sent you a batch of about 40 some trees. <coughs> yes. Then. And I owe another batch of 40 some trees. And that's why there's only 230. Yeah. I'm missing 40 or so. I don't think you necessarily even have, you don't have Bridge Street in there where we just find all the bare roots. Oh, um, no, I don't think so. I don't even know if you have orchards. Or I do have orchards. You do have orchards. Yeah. So we're through orchards. Yeah. And this is on the spreadsheet, not on the tree keeper. On the spreadsheet, yes. There's lots of tabs at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yeah. to go across. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted a clarification from my own brain. Right. Okay. So I did reach out to uh, Data Resource Group, their IT department, to actually build us a couple of other layers so we can actually have a presentation in here so you can actually get a visual once I load everything in there um, of the different years we've planted mm -hmm. and where they are on um, location to each other. So I'm hoping to, you're supposed to get that to me at the end of the week, but it's going to take me probably a month of my own time to enter all that data. So you have to take the list of all the trees in yep. the spreadsheet and one by one put them on a map? First of all, you have to oh. actually figure out yeah, pick, what, make a work zone. Yeah, you have to make a work order. That's why we wanted your spreadsheet right. so we could track it more real time right. and not, mm -hmm. you know, keep bugging rich every month. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But then that tree might be there for 50 or 100 years. Right. So once you mm -hmm. the long life. And then you just track it, you know, you track all the work and the inspection data and stuff that was done back to our was removed. You need an mm -hmm. intern. Yeah. See the okay, you have that, to do it yourself. The, the thing with that is that you have I, I found what I found is that yes, it has to have be an intern, but the person has to have some knowledge or education about the tree biology, tree risk assessment. Um, I mean there's not a lot of risk in a small tree, but you know, you have to actually make sure all the data fields are filled out properly and mm -hmm. you have to have some kind of horticulture background. Mm -hmm. That's my only concern mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing too is if someone's in there and they make a mistake, poof. Mm -hmm. um, poof that work so, order or poof? poof so bigger. poof. Yeah. Poof, poof, poof the data. You can't poof. save it as you go along? It archives it. It'll archive anything that I do for that particular location, not the work orders, but it archives what actually was there. So if there was a vacant site or a tree there, we trimmed it and then we cut it down and then it became a stump and then it became a vacant site, it, it, it will archive all of that for you. But the data loss risk is only that site, not the whole. No, the data loss is for that site. So. All right. Well, is, this, is it something that one of us or us could do? Sorry. Yeah, we've been down. All right. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, all right, moving on. Tree speak, probably no update. No, no update. All right, next. Tree Northampton updates. Yeah. Your dual oh. role. Yes. Um, and Robin, well, of course. I don't uh, know. Just a lot of planting. I think that I was so glad to hear Rich was pleased with our big event. It, um, I thought it went pretty well. And um, big credit to the Wednesday group that was developed. They um, a bunch of great, strong volunteers who were really dedicated, and they were available during the week. Um, some of the Saturday people weren't. Um, we did have a, a young man from North Adams there. Yeah. He is wow. North Adams, Montague, and Greenfield are part of a grant that's been awarded by the um, Federal Forest Service through the Franklin Land Trust. And these communities are supposed to be planting large hundreds and hundreds of trees. Um, in the case of North Adams, they have hired this young man, Brett, to 
coordinate it all and get all the volunteers that were done. And he had the wherewithal to come join us at a big plan thing to see how we do it. And um, I wrote up a document of you know who does the roles that get fulfilled and who does what. And then he jumped right in and, and helped. So I felt that that was a really good opportunity to share what we've been doing here with another community. Yeah. You stay, you stay on and on and on because he, he first was just going to come and see what we we're doing and leave. He realized that he benefit from, and so he shoveled for the whole day. Yeah. He realized the benefit of meeting Rich. Yeah. And forming those professional connections, and he understood the benefit of Bob Goss and the subtlety of his expertise mm -hmm. when there's something complicated about a blue ball. And again, that's probably the most important thing for all those trees that they're going to plant if they're not planted too deep and that they're planted carefully. And so I think we really did them, did them a service to help yeah. to benefit a lot of trees. And um, he'll, he'll find people in his community with expertise now. I met him at the tree steward training. Mm -hmm. that's right, came through, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, pays to go to the, I mean, it pays to go to those kind of things, I guess. Yeah, he's obviously good fit. Mm -hmm. It's not working. He's attempting to plant 250 trees a year, mm -hmm. and he wow. has no experience whatsoever. No. So, Does so he have a team of volunteers? No. 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 In other words, oh, he was coming to see. He wanted to see how we plant trees, how you get volunteers. He was looking at the whole yeah, yeah, thing. Great. Yeah. Yep. It was kind fun. of interesting. He's a three three year grant. Three, yeah. Three year yeah. grant. I yeah. think he's funded for. He's half time. Yeah. You know, Twenty hours a week, and uh, so he has to like forge relationships with the uh, public works department. Uh, planning because I don't know how North Adams mm. North Adams doesn't have a tree planting program apparently the DPW doesn't support mm -hmm. that's not what they're trying to do I don't think so he's got an uphill climb I so I I, I don't know I strongly suggest that he stay in touch if you like yeah so that you yep. can find out more to see what we got what I think happened. we could maybe even have a couple people go out one day and mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Our volunteer group. Yeah, actually, he helped us. I think we. I think it would be nice to. I think it would be there. nice to reciprocate and go mm -hmm. out there and plant with yeah. them. Plant yeah, plant. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yep. I, I would be one of the owners. Yeah, I would yep. too. What is his service area? Just North Adams. Yeah, just North Adams. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Little hall. It's okay. It's mm -hmm. worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came down. Yeah. 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 Um, Spread it around. Yeah, and um, I connected. Ken um, Neiman, who came to our meeting two mm -hmm. months ago, or a month ago, with Alicia Purdy and Alicia Rage for she and Rob to visit Ken, and he's working on the application for community tree planting. So we will have, I know we want more than one, but at least we'll have one neighborhood filling out the new city form. And um, I think that's moving along. I passed it over early. So you yeah. You know, he, he's a, a very former, not even quite retired federal judge, has a sense of process and logic and how, if we can uh, trouble him to give us constructive feedback, it would be a very good thing. See the man he's got things to who's say. On Street? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And he'd already done a lot of groundwork talking to neighbors. Mm -hmm. He did all, and all looking into. Yeah, he, he's, he's about all setbacks, the value of setback yeah. trees, he's working on that. The, the biggest issue that, you know, I think it's probably more appropriate to keep bringing it to us somehow, but I mean, talk to me about it a little bit, is that when you say it's a neighborhood planting and they can be involved and they can make choices, he's the, kind of the neighborhood sponsor, we'll call it, or something, I don't know, and, the, and then when he found out that actually it's not like each person decides whether they want a tree, and if they don't want a tree, there's no tree. This gave him some pause, because it's like he's raining trees down on his neighbors, mm -hmm. like it or not. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. This concern is counterproductive to the design of bringing community together. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that you're putting certain residents in a position where... And it brings up the, the question, well, what choice do we really have, us residents? And it came up on Orchard Street, too, because when it got there, it was like, well, you know, linden trees, or you can have ginkgo trees, but I can't think, it's not like you can have cherry trees, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's not like you can not have trees. So, mm -hmm. they, work on. this is going to need some work to make it so that they, people involved feel comfortable. 
Mm-hmm. So it's good. We're learning from having yeah. very niche community members. And, and he's an articulate thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, most of the trademark candidates. They're sort of winding up. Oh, there's another Tree Northampton. I am sorry to run on. No, you can't. But Rich has encouraged Tree Northampton to transition right into pruning, which we'll probably do starting oh. in the beginning of December. Right. So we'll have a, probably a Wednesday morning oh. and a Saturday morning, or late morning. We might start in the late morning instead of the early morning. Yeah. Sure. All through the winter. We're working through that. We're working. It, yeah. It's not set up yet. In other words, it's really up to Tree Northampton to do. We've just been busy planting, but we're about to just let you know that we're trying to keep the kind of momentum going and not wait till spring. We're so lucky to have Tree Northampton. Yeah, Thank you. Amazing. We like it. Uh, yeah. We like it. So, um, I'm to Okay. Uh, wrapping up. Um, so, uh, I threw this on because I want us to uh, just make sure that we um, keep an eye on the overall planting plan plan, uh, especially the schedule. So I don't want us to get kind of behind, especially as we start to plan for the next year. Um, so I'd like to request that schedule and the whole plan uh, get sent around before every meeting so we can kind of make sure we're staying on target. Um, and I also think it's important that, and Rob, to get it, this is what I meant by kind of circling back to your point, where if, the, if we as a commission adopt the goals in the beginning of the planning process, and then you guys go out and find that trees that are part of the goals are not working, then we need to know that and kind of circle back to change the goals and, and adapt based on the reality that we find in the nurseries and in the street, etc. So I think it's important to create that, that loop between you guys in the street and kind of the overarching goals of the commission and the city in terms of, you know, making sure that different boards are hit and the diversity is there, etc. cetera, uh, but obviously not lose sight of the realities of the stock and, uh, and the planting environments that you guys are seeing and to kind of get a feedback loop going. We're not going to do that if we don't have that process in place. So I'll be working with Lily just to make sure that we get that process more in place and kind of keep this on target. I think that the value of that, you know, that could have value, but I think it would be best to look at the value of the feedback loop and having sort of an overall structure that you're trying to propose. Look at it through the lens of what we've already done to see if it, to see if there actually is a correction that's that's warranted or has any value. Because it takes work to do what you're talking about. And adding a layer of work when we're already achieving the goals that we are. But well, we may not. Well, as I as we indicated before, my main concern is well, we're not here. You're not here. It's not working as well as it is working then there's no structure in place to make sure that what we've created a foundation for continues in the future. If we, if we fail to do that, we're overly relying on the tree board. You and the, board. the tree board and the relationship and the, the goodwill, etc. And as soon as that changes, right. for whatever horrible reason, the whole thing could fall apart. And then the next commission is like, it's like a guidebook. Yeah. 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 And it's not, I, you know, I, it's again, not meant to be. Yeah. But again, a, look burdens and process. But again, looking at it from what we've already done, to, 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 in other words, it's easier for someone like me to operate looking at it going, ah, oh, this is where we need to make shift direction. In other words, to look at what we've done and see if, to know that is valuable. To have, if you're, if you're trying to have a guidebook, for someone to look at the guidebook and look at what we've done and say, here's where we need to show. Mm-hmm. That, that would have. Yeah, definitely. Like based on previous, previous years. Previous of, for years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because that sort of, um, I mean, you can say, well, if we want the same number of trees in different boards each year, but then you can look at it and go, oh, we already just planted it. Every single tree belt is more three, one is true. So 
Because what you're proposing, though, Todd, is at the beginning of every meeting or month that we just give an update? No, I'm, I'm proposing that we institutionalize the process that we voted into place. And that we and keep that, just like a city council is going to have their goals and objectives kind of printed and they, look, and they make sure they stay at target. I think we need to stay at target when it comes to that, that plan mm -hmm. and just make sure that you know, it wasn't a one-time throwaway document. It really needs to be uh, something that we come back to to make sure that that process starts to get institutionalized. Do, do you feel like it's worthwhile or, or are you recommending that we um, go back and capture what we've already done or just going forward? Well, we have to capture what we've already done. That's what mm -hmm. the spreadsheet was about. Mm -hmm. you know, it you sounds like you're, are you wanting to look something a little bit more formal? Or is the spreadsheet sufficient? No, the spreadsheet's sufficient to understand what we've been doing yeah. by ward, by species, et cetera. By year. And then that that subcommittee whose job it is to to bring recommended annual goals to this group for adoption should take that information into account when they set the annual or when they recommend the annual goals. But right if we haven't done that. We're coming up on the new year and mm -hmm. we haven't done any of that. So I think we, we need to come back and institutionalize that over there to our So a, a to needs. do for our committee, Molly, myself and Lily, would be um, before the end of the year to propose Or whatever it is, I I forget what it was on the schedule. Propose a plan for the yeah. for twenty nineteen. Yeah. Right. So I guess I'm just suggesting that instead of hoping always pull it back and forward. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's what the. the I, yeah, I think the. Right. I think the. The stopgap yeah. there is you have the data now that's yeah. available. So, right. you know, yes. they can say, you know, you can meet and say, yes, we want to plant X number in every ward in the tree belts, and then part of that whole meeting would be then, well, let's look at what happened. Right. Okay, you know, I mean, right. that's that's that'll be built in. Right, mm -hmm. and right. you can add data to those spreadsheets. Like right now, it has the ward information, so you can easily sort it in line with that. You could also put in, was this a priority planting, you mm -hmm. know, or was right. this a whatever, yeah. Yeah. you right. know, or was right. this a um, like a community gathering place right. planning, whatever right. those different right. criteria are. You right. could just make a new column for each one. Sure, right. we haven't done that, right? Yeah. No, that hasn't been done. Uh, well, we, we started we've done. a so. little bit of the priority part, but not yeah. much. So the schedule that was outlined in the last version that I have was five year, it's on the last page, five year goal should be set later than September of each year in case we need to request monies from the capital improvements. Annual priority plan should be set in January. Budget request per annual priority plan, large capital improvements request needed in by September. Uh, tree OLM capital request in January or February. Uh, Detailed site plans and master annual tree list approved January and February. Tagging and purchasing of trees per the master annual list February to April. Delivery of trees April through early June for spring and September through early November for fall plantings. Um, plantings will extend from April to early June, September to late November, all weather dependent. Updated tree keepers should be in a month in order to keep up the planting, so that's uh -huh. not happening at the moment. <laughs> And assessments and analysis should be December, early January. No, we switched it from two. Oh, we We did. I may not have. I may not have. Uh, that's why this is an order. And, uh, this might be hold on. So, so probably the making of the agenda should also be checking on that calendar. Oh yeah, see right. That needs, yeah. right. And that should every agenda should also have a view. Yeah, I think the plan should be included with every. Correct. It should be on the back of every agenda right. just to keep us focused right, right. that we're going to get behind. Yeah, this yeah. Before. I think yeah, we're going to spend a lot of time on that. It'll keep us from getting behind and being in the same place we're always. Oh my God, we're going to get three. Yeah. Where's yeah. that? Where's that document live? Now. Does anybody know? We want the plan. Yeah, the overarching plan. Um, I, I can find it in, is it in a Tibet? And is, that, is that what you're suggesting, Todd? On the, yes. On the back of our agenda? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is, that the, the is that the page of the spreadsheet that has the colored columns? It has a different, like, years down the left and then across? No, well, there's, there's a word document. There's a word, oh, there's a a word, word document, document a guiding okay. word document that was refined multiple times that talks about all oh. these things plus any change in the project. Uh -huh. 
That should be on the sure, side. I have some reason to go That's why we need to have this drive where we all share this information. Oh, that's still on that slide. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What happens to the time that the commission worked on almost a year ago on board where there were goals set out? Oh, priorities that we um, wanted to cover goals, yeah, objectives for the year. Yes. That was, kind of like a, that was kind of like a self-evaluation, I think, I would call it. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, what, 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 what was getting on the same well, page the back there. Yeah, I think we did that the first couple of years we did. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you're good. We'll do it again. Yeah. But that's a separate. That was more, yeah, that, was, that wasn't a planting plan prioritization process. That was more, what the hell are we going to do? It's right. Whole body for the next right, year. Right, right, right. Like talking about Arbor Day, yeah, and um, what do we want to follow this? What are our priorities? And we can do that, yeah. you know, we can ask uh, when we Deal put about an agenda to because that was at least two years ago, yeah, it was last, it was last winter. We yeah. did that. I thought before. we've done it every, every we have done it every beginning year. Of that's every what year. we used to guide us for the plan, yeah, we know it's yeah. for uh, basically for the planting plan and schedule for the every year. This was the first year that we've actually talked about developing a five-year capital plan, a five-year plan, and then that coincided with the five-year capital request that I just made through the director, which is for fifty thousand dollars for the next every year for the next five years, but can be revisited every year based upon if we have a large project we want to tackle, we can actually increase that request. Whether we get funded or not, I don't know. Since we can ask, but we have to have a plan in place to. When do we find out about that fund? That uh, that that's automatically in there. That, that's in the what they call the OOM. Oh. So it just it's like a regular oh, regular line maintenance item, line, yeah. but it's in the capital portion of the DPW project. Great. Mm -hmm. We spend most of it. Um, yes and no. I mean, I, this year probably because I spent almost uh, seven thousand dollars on uh, those uh, injections. No injections of uh, of the uh, elms. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But because the the other thing too is that the DBW budget will be become realigned at some point because of the transfer of like all of our personal services from the general highway to the parks and cemetery. So Don and I have been out analyzing the budget and part of that is, like for example, the bags are taken out of work. They're not, normally I don't take them out of the tree planting budget. I probably should have, and I will have to go forward, but there's been more money and that. Now that money can be rolled over. So whatever money we don't expend gets rolled over for the following fiscal year. So. For a bit in balance, but yeah, we need, yes, we need. Yeah. I mean, we could plant if we could muster the ability. We could, there is money to plant more than 300 trees a year, but you might have no water. We, well, we watered 350 this year, 350, 400, oh, one guy, right? But it's twice that, yes, you're correct. Because if we have to go back and water, we're planting this year, that's yeah. that year up to around 500 some odd trees. Yeah, that might overrun our capacity. It would. It would. Yeah. Did you water less this year because it rained so much? Uh, I would say we watered. Uh, no, I would say we watered more. More. Yep. Huh. Why? Because we ended up. Don't forget last year and the year before that. So we were seeing oh, drought signs right. from yeah. two years ago. Right. So those trees we planted two years ago that received water bags, plus the trees from last year, mm -hmm. plus everything that we planted this year. Oh wow! So we were doing basically th almost three years worth of trees, and then, you know, trees that were mm -hmm. a month or a year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, it was yeah. brutal. Yeah. But this fall we basically we stopped. And yeah. We just got that taking water bags off. But. Oh. Mm -hmm. But I got back to the planting. Plan. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, that was I think it makes sense because it's going to try to 
it's got to be the framework to keep us on right. track. You know, right. It's a good reminder to see it back there. Yeah. Yeah. And I did, I did reach out just to add to that. I did so. One of the reasons Rob and I met yesterday is talking about the final tree plantings and pruning that like we mentioned. But I also reached out to Chestnut Ridge Nursery to actually try to get a list from them for nursery stock, well knowing that we we're going to be looking at different planting locations placed based on this the one year plan we're going to try to implement and to try to get ahead of the curve to see if they could actually produce one so we could actually have a nursery stock list we could utilize that we could actually go ahead and say we can plant these locations because we have this stock i don't know if it's going to that's going to pan out we might go back to this is the location and i'll go find the stock but this was the bare root nursery yeah he's he he has uh, the, a lot of you know obviously all bare root trees but he does have uh so bad, trees. he has root right. trees but not that many but he's yes. but he seems very wanting he wants to do business with us and so i just thought that rick sent him an email saying well, we're interested yeah. he might begin to get us what we want right, right. Um, whereas with john it doesn't really exactly work that way on a one-on-one -on -one. he kind of listens to us a little but <clears throat> we're always competing with right oh it's much better to have a second well yeah. dip in no yeah. kidding so we're trying to develop a second well yeah. and, and they're 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 just very careful obviously but well, that quality of those roots yeah. are amazing yeah so okay. there's no reason there's speculation that we'll do that with three bags so mm -hmm. don't know well, just to tie things up with that conversation um on on the uh, master spreadsheet um, the first tab does have our five-year plan, right? And it's color code. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, the yeah. five oh. areas. It, so is that data, I don't remember exactly what's on it, is that data that could be... But it didn't have the calendar. What you're talking about is the mm -hmm. calendar. Correct, it did not. Oh. Yeah. So we, we do this by the state, we do this by the state. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little unclear. Is there um, other data that you want added to the spreadsheet pages that have the list of all the trees planted. Is there other data you want on there to show for meeting certain goals or something? Not yet. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, all right. At this point. Okay. I mean, there, there was this issue of priority site, map priority site, stuff like that. Right. I, I don't know. I'm not clear exactly about that. Yeah. We could talk about it. Well, I mean, I think there's just going to, you know, this we're making we're running like a parallel database. It's a different type of database because TreeKeeper doesn't tell you exactly, you know, what you want to plant in the future. It just says, here's 2,000 planting sites, have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, then we have to take those locations and other places we have found and make this five-year plan. Think of TreeKeeper as like your final audit. Yeah. Yes. It's your, yeah. 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 It's your audit that you get done a year and a half after yeah. the fiscal year mm -hmm. comes. Yeah. yeah. But what you're doing is a monthly P&L statement. Live. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think over time it would be good. So after we have two, three, four, five years, we can go back to South Street and actually look to see how those trees are doing in the tree belt. You know, were, were, were we successful yeah. yep. planting that yeah. particular species of tree in that right. urban environment? Mm -hmm. And somewhere, somewhere we need to capture that data. So when we yeah. go to do other plantings like that, we recognize the fact that the mistakes we made or good things that we did. But I don't know where we would capture that at the moment. Well, some of that data could go on a spreadsheet, you know, because each individual tree is listed on there. Yep. So we could have the columns for. We could have an evaluate two year evaluation yeah. column or something like that. Help and have a code. Two years from The codes that you would put in there and then you could sort of limits. Yeah. 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 But right. that's just, it. just an example of some data that would be worthwhile yeah. having. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, so. Right? Yeah. I mean, the only problem we're having is that we're moving so quickly. And, and knowing how the trees are going to be in the road is a slower process. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, know, but you got it. So, in other words, no, you got to do it, but before, just, I don't know, I was, I was saying that, oh, yeah, we'll put them in in a couple of years, we'll have some idea. But I've done further research, it's not true. It's going to take quite a bit longer. Five years. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The five, ten year is really mm -hmm. where you're going to find out where mm -hmm. the trees are. Unfortunately. Because we're moving so fast that five or ten years from now, that information might not have value. We might have already put out a zillion more trees. In there. I mean, we'll still want to track it. But well, we could also keep track of the trees that we pruned. I mean, that could go on that yes. oh, spreadsheet too. Yeah, yeah. Although 
Well, no. The richest no. system is that they're yeah, going yeah. to the database. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm just saying, I'm, I'm for very much tracking. I'm just saying that there's a, a problem in that we're planting so fast that the data of how they're doing, mm -hmm. like in our five year plan, it's not going to be very good at informing our five year plan, unfortunately. Okay. Any other business? Just a reminder that we don't have a meeting. A right. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, right. But we are meeting on 12 5. Yes. yes. Okay. Is that the next meeting, 12 5? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I can't remember did we decide if we're having a meeting on the 19th. Do we get that far? We are having a meeting. December? <laughs> yeah, Why not? It was in the minutes that we were. Fine. Okay. That's far enough to push us with anything. All right. What was that? 12. 12 5. 12 5 is our next meeting. You want to ask? 12 19. That's getting close to, you know, when Santa Claus comes. I know. It's going to bring us a tree, Rob. It's going to pull a tree down the chimney. Not pull a tree out of the chimney like that. Maybe bring some structural soil. Yeah, really, that'd be good. Bring the structural soil. Yeah, yeah imagine that. Bailey, you're good. See you soon. All right. Uh, to do list, Rob. Yeah, I don't know. Stay healthy. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know, all kinds of Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You don't work for us. Oh, I, I'm playing phone tag with the guy from Chicopee who worked with me in Bassett. I'm still yeah. on that, so. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm going to reach out to Lily and Molly and figure out a time that for us to have to meet okay. um, for our last meeting of the year. All right. And just to be clear, Todd, do you want me to send Beth something or do you just throw me back to the if you find something quick, just send it to me and I'll compare it to the one that I have and make sure it's the latest one that we adopted. Well, what I have is the, the spreadsheet. I don't want the spreadsheet. And then I have that in a Word doc. Do you have the Word doc that was all text at the point? Not the one that you sent. I would ask. I would. I'll, 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 I'm going to send it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I have it. All right, so yeah. talk yeah. about that. Okay. Google organized person. Right. Yeah, um, some other people. Nothing was articulated, but I did write down. I have a list of some of those neighborhood um, listservs and counselor emails all in one spreadsheet. I knew it's going to send that to Rich. Okay. Nice. And I'll continue to work on the community planning, planting application with Ken and anyone else who. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, you're willing to wait? Well, I, I work, you're willing right. to help people fill it out? That's what we're doing, yeah. Right. Oh, if you've seen it, it has. And what Lily said is what kind of location, it. all that information. Yeah. So Alicia's working, really Alicia's doing it. But if I have somebody who wants to fill out an application for their neighborhood, you're saying they can get help filling out the application? Yeah, I think it would be advisable if they want to, because if they go in there and say, we want 10 cherry tree, yeah, they're not okay, going to so be very competitive in the process. So the person should contact you if they want to fill out the application? Yeah, like the tree in Northampton Gmail and okay. somebody will, a couple of us check it and okay. somebody. So just to be clear, Sue, so so going forward, is tree Northampton handling these applications for the neighborhood tree planters? Or no, I think we are. No, but she's offering to be a coach for well, various neighborhoods, yeah. especially in this first year. All okay. along as it was envisioned, I think, was that just as we've been um, mostly Rob, and then he's over the past few years trained Alicia to go, and you've done it with Rob too, citing yeah. the trees, and I've done it looking at what are the available spaces, and then what would be appropriate compared to what else is in that space, and how the space is used. Yeah. Is that on the website to suggest that people contact you to get help? I think so. I hadn't heard that before. Oh. I that no. was an option. On, on, the, on, the, on the tree, on the uh, neighborhood planning plan? No. Oh. I don't believe so. And that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, I hope I'm not opening a can of worms. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a great I service to offer, but there. I'm not seeing there's a problem with that. I was just getting clear about. It has all these spaces to put different kinds of trees and locations. No, I think it's, it's great to be able to offer that, but we should, if it's available, it should be available to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So the way it's worked so far on Orchard Street and it, um, Prospect Street, which are the two projects that we've been working on, is we'll essentially 
Lily comes in contact with them, and then she goes, okay, talk to those guys. Which is kind of informal, but huh. us, you know, because... Why don't we put, why don't we put that on the, in a, why don't we table this and put it on it, because it seems like it's a discussion point we need to iron out. How so about the application to give December 1st, right? Oh. Uh, so it mind. seems like we need to put something on the website yeah. saying, so thanks for helping with the instructions <laughs> of filling out the application, contact this person to help you fill up, if you'd like help filling it out, right? Well, I mean, it's... Make it kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. In a sense, it's kind of self-explanatory. I'm the tree warden, and they should be contacting me to fill it out. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Does it say that on there? Doesn't say it on there specifically. Because I mean, if I just looked at the web page, somebody said, "Hey, you can fill out this form and get trees." I would just like contact my neighbors and fill out the form, and I wouldn't know to contact you. To, and why would I know to do that? I would just submit it. Yeah, it was very informal that Lily just came, handed it off to us and said it to Rich, and she could have handed it to Rich instead. Mm -hmm. We always assume everything's under Rich's authority. Yeah. Anything we're, anything we're doing. Well, it sounds like in this situation, because it's time sensitive, that and we only had one potential applicant, is that? So we're just trying but to we know the process. I know another person said she was interested, but I was waiting to tell her until I knew that the it's thing was actually, was actually, was actually a, set up and run. So there's a preview out of the application as a PDF. So you can download it and you can do it all by hand, and then you actually will go online and actually apply. Uh -huh. So at that point, it doesn't say that, it just says the City of Northampton Tree Warden, Publish a Tree Commission in partnership with Tree Northampton and Inc. Encourage neighbors to organize themselves and submit an application on the tree planting project. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's but well, we, we got three. We got three minutes. Well, my task is to continue filling out the spreadsheet. <laughs> oh, right. And let your neighbor know that I'm following. Yeah, I don't know why. You, you did the last batch. I have to talk to you about that after you. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. All right, I'm going to locate the final uh, plan, plan uh, and uh, we'll get it on the back of the agenda. Uh, I am also uh, working with Rich on getting some uh, permit language in place um, for the, um, in lieu of uh, like a public shade tree protection ordinance, uh, looking at some, some more permit language that can be adopted much faster. Um, so we'll bring that forward as soon as we can, probably not though, Jane. Um, and some, uh, some things for the next agenda. Is there a motion? I move to adjourn this meeting. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you.